بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته قف كست ما شف دياء من سبك أو كف دياء يلك السلام يا اسمعي بويس Good morning and thank you for the warm introduction and kind words. It is truly my pleasure to be here today among esteemed colleagues and most importantly the organizers attendees who have joined us both in person and virtually. I would like to extend my gratitude to Abrar University because they are the, the first institution in Somalia who thought about One Health. Also, I would like to extend my gratitude to all those who participated in making this happen today. Next slide, please. Oh, are you still in the... Okay, yes. Considering that topic for today is shaping the future for One Health, I will be covering the One Health approach, highlighting the importance of policy and advocacy in this context. Okay, Okay, uh, this is slide two, I think. Uh, Any time I say next slide, please, L like Matt Hancock, the, 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 the minister in the UK during the COVID, everyone was saying next slide because he was all the time in the TV and asking for next slides. <laughs> okay. okay, considering that the topic for today is shaping the future of One Health, I will be covering the One Health approach, highlighting the importance of policy and advocacy. In this context, more importantly, I will also cover the success of previous initiatives, highlighting the challenges, opportunities, and finally concluding with a call of action. Next slide, please. I want us to primarily reflect on the significance of the initiative, recognizing that the health of our population, the wildlife, and the environment are all interconnected. Therefore, when considering the previous disjointed and segregated approaches, these are simply no longer sufficient to address the complex challenges we face in Somalia. Globally, we are battling with emerging infectious diseases, food insecurity, and climate change. That is globally. But, in Soma, however, in Somalia, these challenges are even more pronounced, which require a collaborative response. On a personal note, I welcome the approach of One Health due to its recognition of the crucial links between the ecosystems, where evidence-based decision-making and a focus on prevention are the key. It is an approach that bridges the health and environmental gaps. We, where we know that in Somalia, this is not only relevant, but it is essential. In considering all of these, my message for today is a call to action. Next slide, please. On the one hand, policy refers to the framework of laws, regulations, and guidelines that govern our actions and shape our collective response to the health challenge. How is my voice? Okay. On the other hand, advocacy involves the mobilization of individuals and organizations 
to champion a cause, raise awareness and influence decision makers to enact positive change. Considering this, policy and advocacy are the core factors that drive the One Health approach forward. Effective policies create framework for One Health initiatives guiding interdisciplinary efforts allocated. Effective policies create framework for One Health initiatives guiding in this interdisciplinary efforts, allocating resources, and setting the stage for sustainable health improvements. Without effective policies, our efforts remain disjointed, our resources underutilized, and our goal is unattainable. Equally important is advocacy. Advocacy raises the profile of One Health, ensuring that it is not just a concept to discuss it in academic circles, but a principle understood and valued by policymakers, stakeholders, and the wider community. Through advocacy, we mobilize support. Through advocacy, we mobilize support, influence policy formulation, and engage communities in a meaningful way. Say this, knowledge in this context is power. Knowledge is power. So what do we need? We must ensure that the One Health approach is understood. If it is not even understood, nothing will start. So the One Health, the One Health approach, we need that it is understood. Accept it. People have to accept from grassroots level to the policymakers and champion it by those who can influence change, turning needs into effective policies. So championing is very important. The One, the one Health initiative needs to be understood, accepted, and champion it for. There are Somali figures who can champion for this, whether they are policy makers. As you said, the first conference there was the Somali president, Hassan Sheikh, and that gave it a very good picture. So we need also more champions. Next slide, please. Somalia has many challenges. When it comes to implementing effective policy and advocacy strategies, by the way, the last three years I was with a UN agency, UNFPA, and my mandate was, because in UNFPA we have vision, mission, and mandate. So to make this successful, uh, I was uh, the senior advisor for advocacy and policy, the, the strategies, to make this reach, to make this attainable. So in Somali, we know that Somali has many challenges when it comes to implementing effective policy and advocacy strategies, particularly in how these work together to meet the diverse needs of the Somali population. Given Somalia's unique challenges, there are many factors to consider, such as policy development, research, and innovation. And that is one of the things that those institutions like ABRAR are doing, research and innovation, global cooperation, and community engagement, just to name a few. However, as a medical professional and public health expert, I can firsthand note that capacity building must emerge as a cornerstone of the One Health strategy in order to address not, not that only the population needs, but also focusing on creating sustainable economic opportunities to empower communities, reduce poverty, and foster long-term stability. 
from yesterday till this morning, yes, we were listening to different speakers, and we have seen the role of capacity building. So capacity building is very important. We need to create sustainable economic opportunities to empower communities, reduce poverty, and foster long-term stability. This ensures that our efforts also address natural resources management and environmental sustainability as key components. It is my belief that policy is translated into action on the ground. But what I have seen, there are so many policies, just they are kept in the shelves. If the policy is not translated into action on the ground, then there is no use of ha having so many policies. It is only through developing Somalia's workforce's skills that we as a country can enhance our national capability to address current challenges, but also ensure resilience against future threats. This approach also goes hand in hand with community engagement as this ensures that the One Health system is not only contextually relevant but also effectively implemented at the grassroots levels. So we need to go down, vertical approach from up to down to the grassroots levels. These are ambitions which require extensive advocacy and support from our national and international partners. You play a significant, a significant role in enabling us to realize our objectives and embed it as a national agenda item. These are those ambitions to reach. We must have a collaborative, coordinated, and focused approach. Collaborative, coordinated, and focused approach. Next slide, please. Okay, so now I want us to very briefly look at the lessons learned from case studies in Mongolia and East Africa. What I mean is the role of advocacy and policy, how they were very beneficial in those two cases. That offer us a real example of the One Health System. The first thing to notice Collaboration, coordination, and focus. I say again, collaboration, coordination, and focus. Points which, which I highlighted will determine the success of One Health strategy in Somalia. In this case, the World Health Organization, the Food and Agriculture Organization, and the World Organization for Animal Health are all collaborating together under one umbrella to tackle the big issue such as zoonotic diseases and the antimicrobial resistance. So those three big organizations are collaborating under one umbrella to tackle uh, those issues such as zoonotic diseases and the antimicrobial resistance. In the case of, in the case study of Mongolia, the country has dealt with their fair share of zoonotic diseases. However, they have made significant progress by bringing together the sectors of wildlife, human health, and livestock. This was underpinned by cohesive policies that ensure collaboration and leverages technologies to identify and address any new outbreaks. The strategy also included extensive community engagement, providing long-term health education initiatives and advocating for sustained funding. It is something we can do. When others have done, we can do. Now turning our attention to East Africa, where the fight against rabies 
is underway in countries like Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. It's a real challenge, but through extensive dog vaccinations, public health education campaigns, and enhanced surveillance systems, they are striving to eradicate human rabies deaths by 2030, a monumental milestone. I share these two case studies to communicate this one key takeaway message today. The transformative power of advocacy, policy reforms, and community engagement are the driving force behind it all. Next slide, please. Despite these successes, the next slide, okay, seven years. Which slide is this one? Yes, challenge. Despite these successes, the path forward is not without its challenges. Interdisciplinary collaboration is often easier said than done. You can talk, but to walk the talk is the real issue. With barriers in language, methodology, and perspective. Funding constraints further complicate the picture because so many countries like Somalia, we are facing real funding challenges. Even doing research, you need uh, funding as do gaps in public awareness and support. Yet, within these challenges lie opportunities. Technolo technological advances offer new tools for disease surveillance and environmental monitoring. Educational initiatives are expanding, understanding the support of One Health principles, and at the policy level, there is growing recognition among policymakers that the challenges we face require integrated solutions. We have, yes, we have seen yesterday uh, the ministers sitting here together and thinking of something combined uh, how to face these challenges. So there is growing recognition uh, among policymakers that the challenges we face require integrated solutions. This recognition is paving the way for new policy frameworks that engage, that encourage collaboration across sectors, fostering innovation and holistic approaches to health and environmental challenges. Next slide, please. As we look to the future, As we look to the future, let us con consider our roles in shaping it. In this room, although the minister is left, but we have different categories of Somali people. So, all policy makers, I urge you to champion laws and regulations that support One Health initiatives. Your leadership can ensure that the necessary frameworks are in place for interdisciplinary co collaboration and that sufficient resources are allocated to these vital efforts. Have we MBs here in the room today? We don't have. But I will make sure that my message will reach the policy makers, that their role is to champion laws and regulations that support One Health, the parliamentarians. We have to speak with them. We need laws that support One Health initiatives. So policy service as the foundation upon which our collective efforts are built. It provides the necessary framework to guide actions, allocate resources, and hold stakeholders accountable. Said that effective policy does not emerge in a vacuum. It requires proactive advocacy to ensure support, 
mobilize resources, and drive meaningful change. To my fellow health professionals, environmental scientists, and one health advocates. So in this room, I have this category, yes? My fellow health professionals. You are in this room, yes? Yes. OK. Environmental scientists. OK. Oh, I have seen. Oh, he's one of those people that I respect. We work together. To my fellow health professionals, environmental scientists, and the One Health advocates. So Abrar is here. So, and from today, I am a One Health advocate. <laughs> Count on me. Your advocacy is essential. Share knowledge, engage communities, and advocate for integrating one health principles into decision making. Health practitioners are also key frontline responders, researchers, and educators, shaping evidence-based policies, prioritizing prevention, surveillance, and preparedness. Civil society, including grassroots movements, the role of civil society is crucial. The women organizations, oh, Fujana Bafadia. <laughs> I will, when, 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 uh, the role of civil society, women organizations is really very crucial. When I was the Karma ambassador, I'm still Karma ambassador, but when I was very active, I used it in the Benad region, I engaged all the brother uh, districts, the women groups, and I made sure that those women, they go to the health centers in each district. Then every three months we get a report which district has the children most vaccinated, uh, the maternal health. So there was like a competition between them. So also we have to use the women groups. Um, okay, civil society, including grassroots movements and NGOs, amplifies voices, raises awareness, and holds governments accountable. Their advocacy drives policy change, fosters community engagement, and promotes equity and social justice. Next slide, please. This is the conclusion, yes. This is the last one. In conclusion, the journey towards a One Health world is both a challenge and an opportunity. It requires us to rethink traditional strategies and to collaborate in different ways. Let us have here today not just advocates for One Health, but as champions, not only advocates, but as champions for a movement that has the power to transform our world. When we start in Somalia a movement that transforms Somalia, it will be Africa, and then it will be the whole world. Thank you very much, and I will stop here.